Hello and welcome, this is Jonathan Finlater, also known as Pastor J, and today is Sunday the 30th of August 2020. So today I speak from my home during this COVID-19 pandemic, although it's good to know that the restrictions are being uh, released and lockdown is easing. Now there's some reflections that I want to have for today, just before I bring my message. Firstly, my family and I, we came back from Turkey last week, and we had a really, really great time. Now, we were not sure whether we were going to go because of all that was going on. And even our hotel, the one that we booked, was closed. But thank God, we were relocated to another hotel, a five-star hotel, much nicer, much more luxurious than the first. And we really had a great time. We were able to navigate the city and um, we had some really great conversations with people, met some lovely people. And all in all, we saw God just being there for us providing for us and looking after us. So I think that's a bit of an encouragement, a word of encouragement for you all, that even during the midst of a storm, during this COVID-19, God is still active, God is still doing good things. And um, yeah, we were really blessed by that holiday. We were glad that we went in the end. The recent police shootings upon 29-year-old Jacob Blake, yet again another reminder of the police brutality that black people are facing just trying to get over the George Floyd death. Thank God Jacob is alive. But what a horrible situation and for his children to witness as well. We are still dealing with this disparity in our society. Thank God for these recordings as well, because otherwise we would still be living in some kind of denial. People would still be denying that these things are happening if it wasn't for these recordings. The untimely passing of Chadwick Boseman Chadwick Boseman, the American actor who played T'Challa, King T'Challa, in Black Panther. And it just reminded me of life and its fragility once again. I mean, he was fighting this, his cancer during the, the filming, during the recording and promotion of the film, Black Panther. So just, I just thinking, wow, he really had to hide that and just sort of soldier on with this thing that he was dealing with. But again, the film was historic. And it's such a great thing for the black community. Children, once again, have a, a superhero that they can dress up in and be proud of. We've not really had that. There was Blade, um, but there's not many. And so this film really done some stuff <coughs> for the black community, for other people too. But it was a big thing. And um, we're grateful for that film and the way it kind of broke the mold in many places. Yeah, children going back to school this week. My children are going back on Thursday and many children are going back, haven't been at school since uh, March. So um, again, something to pray about our children, kids going back to school, traveling and getting back into the swing of things. Church buildings, reopenings, many have opened already, but some more will be opening this week, next week. Um, our church included. And it's, these are things to continue to pray about. We need God's direction. We need God's guidance in what we do. And we need God's spirit to continually move, bringing people to him. So may we trust in the Lord during these times, unprecedented times. We keep hearing that word unprecedented during these challenging times. And may we bring everything to God in prayer. Every situation, every problem, every challenge, if it's a problem to us, then it's on God's heart too. And we can bring it to God. God listens. God cares. So I'm going to get into my message. Um, I'm currently reading John's letter. This letter is to the house church communities in Ephesus. Ephesus is on the western shore of Turkey, now in ruins. But John is talking to the Jewish believers, Jewish followers of Jesus Christ. In chapter 1, we're now in chapter 2, but in chapter 1, we have looked at how Jesus is the word of life. Jesus, who has pre-existed, who has been there from the beginning. Very important, because often we see Jesus as the man who came into our world in a certain time in history, who grew up um, to the age of 30, his ministry began, Three and a half years later, approximately, he was crucified. And we see Jesus as this person just entering into humanity, into our world. 
That's true. But we have to also remember that Jesus pre-existed. He was there in the beginning. He was not created. We looked at God being light. God is light. That means he is truth. He is right and he is truth. God is light and there is no evil in him whatsoever. And we as Christians, as believers of Christ, are to walk in that light. We are to reflect God's light in our own lives. We do that by the help of the Holy Spirit. We also looked at how we are to confess our sins. We're not to hide our sins. We are to confess them, be open about them. God sees everything in our lives, so we are to be transparent about our sins too. Bring them to God. God will forgive us because he is faithful and he is just to do so. And so we come to our reading today, which is from 1 John chapter 2. And I'll just be reading verses 1 to 6 from the NIV, the New International Version. So 1 John chapter 2, just verses 1 to 6. It reads, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar. And the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Amen. I want us to particularly look at verses 1 and 2. John addresses his listeners once again as dear children. You can see that in verse 1. Dear children. He also addresses them in the same way in verse 12 and in verse 28. We also see that in chapters 3, 4 and 5. Calling them dear children, this is not patronizing, this is not to belittle them, but this is a phrase of love and endearment. John has a great love for the Jewish believers and followers of Jesus Christ. Now, John wants them to know something. John wants them to be very, very clear on this. He does not want them to sin. Why? A sinful lifestyle is evidence that God is not in you. Let me say that again. A sinful lifestyle is evidence that God is not in you. It is evidence that you are not walking in the light, in God's light. Now, we all sin. Everybody sins. We all say and do things that displease God that go against him. That's what sin is, going against God, displeasing God, breaking the law. We all do those things. None of us are perfect. None of us are without sin. But when we look at sin in this context particularly, we are talking about sin as a lifestyle. We're talking about sin as a regular practice. John doesn't want them to sin, meaning I don't want you to see sin as a regular practice. We do things wrong, but it shouldn't be a lifestyle. A true Christian, a true Christian is not to practice sin and live it as a daily lifestyle. They are not to do that. In fact, it is an oxymoron. They're not compatible. You cannot be a Christian and be filled with God's Spirit, have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and then live a sinful lifestyle. You can't do it. This is what John has been saying very, very clearly. You can't have Jesus Christ in your life, the Holy Spirit living in you, and live a sinful lifestyle. So anybody that you see clearly living a sinful lifestyle cannot be saved. In the same verse, verse 1, we have a but. You know that every time you see a but, it's a contrast. John gives us a contrasting statement. It says, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. 
What does that mean? If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. What does it mean? This is a really amazing and powerful statement. When we sin, that is when we miss the mark, that's God's mark, God's standard. When we sin, that means we break the law, we violate God's commands, we are to be punished. When a person breaks the law, they are to stand before a judge and receive some form of punishment. That's how it works, doesn't it, in our world. In our time, the punishment may be a fine, it may be community service, could be a custodial sentence. In some states, it's the death penalty. Nevertheless, a convicted, a guilty criminal, guilty person is supposed to feel the full force of the law for what they have committed. Well, guess what the Bible says? The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. In other words, when you sin, you are supposed to receive death. It's the same way when you work. You are to receive death. A wage that is your reward that is what you deserve for the work that you have done many of us work very hard and don't get enough money that's the problem but when we work we are to receive a reward it's wages but the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death your sin equals death and when we talk about death we're not just talking about a physical one we're talking about also a spiritual death a separation from God is a spiritual death. Now, this is the key part. When a Christian commits sin, they are to go before the judge. That is God. God is the judge. Their punishment should be death. But the Christian has the, def the best defense lawyer. That's what it means by we have an advocate, a middleman. We have the best defense lawyer, better than Johnny Cochran, who got OJ off. We have the best defense lawyer. The lawyer can go to the judge, they can go before the judge, and they can plead your case. And the judge listens to the lawyer. The judge takes on board everything that the lawyer is saying on your behalf, on my behalf. The lawyer in verse 1 here is described as the righteous one. This lawyer is righteous. The question is, why is the lawyer so effective? Why? Why is the lawyer able to get the judge to listen to them? Why is the lawyer able to sway the judge? Why is the lawyer the righteous one, Jesus Christ. Verse 2 explains why. In the King James Version and in the English Standard Version, the Bible says he, meaning Jesus, is the propitiation for our sins. Propitiation. What does that mean, propitiation? It means to appease. I want you to think of another word, satisfy. So when you hear propitiation, I want you to think of satisfy. The NIV, which I read from, says Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Jesus died for your sins and my sins. But it does not stop there. That's not just where it stops. Jesus Christ was the propitiation for our sins. In other words, Jesus was the satisfactory sacrifice for you and me. Let's let that sink in a bit more. Jesus is not just the sacrifice for your sins, he is the satisfactory sacrifice for your sins, the propitiation. He was able to appease God's wrath. Many times we have seen in history or heard of a criminal getting away with it. They got off lightly, we say. They did not get the punishment that we felt they deserved. 
I mean, when you look at George Floyd's case, we are looking at people, police officers, enforcers of the law that we do not feel have gotten the punishment that they deserved. And we feel that justice has not been done. Well, check this out. Jesus, who did not sin, who is not guilty of any sin, did justice for us. Jesus' death satisfied God's justice. Jesus' death turned God's wrath away from us. And it went on to Jesus. God's wrath that should be on you and me for sinning, for doing wrong, for breaking the law, for violating his commandments, for missing the mark. That wrath that should be on us has been turned away. Why? Because Jesus is the satisfactory sacrifice for you and me. Jesus' death meant that God's mercy was freely given to us. We benefit from God's mercy because of Jesus, the advocate, the righteous one. As a result, the judge is now merciful towards us. Because of all that, we receive God's mercy. So people need to understand the serious implications of Jesus' death. It's not just Jesus dying on the cross for sins, but that is death was the satisfactory atonement, appeasement for our sins. Christians should understand these implications also and live in that gratitude and in that thankfulness of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Let that sink in. Jesus is our advocate. And so if you're not a believer today, you need that advocate, you need that lawyer, that good defence lawyer, because God's wrath is upon you. My prayer for you is that you will know that you are unable to save yourself from God's wrath, which is upon you. Which is the reason why Jesus died for our sins. God's wrath is upon us. It is Jesus that satisfied God's wrath. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. God's wrath has now been turned away from us and it was turned onto Jesus when Jesus died on the cross. Jesus bore our sins. He didn't become sinful. I've heard some people say that. Jesus did not become sinful, but he bore, he carried our sins. A bit like having a big bag, heavy bag on your back. And God's wrath then went onto Jesus. That's why Jesus, when he died, he felt that, uh, that God had forsaken him. Why have you forsaken me? He cried out on the cross. My message to you today is to repent from your sins, meaning to turn from the way you're going, the wrong way, and turn to God. Turn the right way. A change of mind, a change of direction. Repent from your sins, turn to God. Confess your wrongdoings. Be open, be transparent about your wrongdoings, about your sins, and accept that Jesus both died for your sins, was the appropriate sacrifice, the only possible sacrifice to cover your sins, but also that Jesus rose again. He triumphed over sin, over death, over Satan. And in him, we can have eternal life. So today I urge you to place your faith in Jesus Christ. Trust in him as your personal saviour. Don't deny that you need saving. Put your trust in him as your personal saviour and make him king. Kanye West said Jesus is king. He's correct. However you feel about Kanye West, he's correct. Jesus is king and make him Lord of your life. Allow God's spirit to dwell in you, to occupy your life to guide your actions, to guide your speech. That's what it is to walk in the light, to walk in God's light. So let's remember that today. Jesus is the satisfactory sacrifice for you and I. He died for humankind, for everybody. Jesus does not want anybody to perish, but to have everlasting life. Put your faith, put your trust in Jesus. You're not saved by the things you do. 
by the good deeds you do. This is the problem with a lot of religion. There's this feeling that we must keep trying to appease God by the things we do and you will never be able to appease God by your actions. We are to just put our faith in Jesus Christ. Only. Amen. Let us now close with prayer and then I will say the benediction. Heavenly Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are our advocate and you died for our sins. You are our defence lawyer. You plead our case before the Father. We thank you that you are the propitiation for our sins. You satisfied God's wrath that should have been on us. May we put our trust in you. May we put our faith in you. May we look to you. As kids go back to school this week, as churches reopen and some kind of normality is, is trying to get back into place, Lord, we look to you and trust in you. We bring all worries, concerns to you, Lord Jesus. If we are sick, heal our bodies, mentally and physically. Renew our strength. Invigorate us, rejuvenate us. May we be full of life, abundant life. May we be full of your peace, your love and your joy. And may we walk in your light. Fill us with your spirit that we may do so. In Jesus' mighty and powerful name. Amen. Let us say the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Praise God. Amen.